All right, guys, today, let's do some burgers. Um, <laughs> one of the things that we do a lot, like that's one of the things that we're most known for, burgers, our wings, probably the top two, uh, aside from ranch. Don't even get me started on ranch. Anyway, uh, so a couple things we're gonna need. Scale, you'll need these patty papers. Um, gloves, because we're handling raw meat. You got your meat chub. Red cutting board, again, red is for beef. So red cutting board for raw meat. You will need a shallow Lexan, and then another one that has some ice in the bottom of it to make sure that the burgers that we're prepping are staying cold while we're prepping them. And then just like any other raw product, you gotta go ahead and get one of these drip sets. So go ahead and put that in there for now. Um, so our, to start, our burgers are seven ounces a piece, at least for the regular ones. The kid burgers are half that, three and a half ounces, so it should be pretty easy to remember. If you don't know, um, there are two separate places in both walk-ins that kind of have all the different weights and measurements and stuff like that. In them. So um, I personally like to use this knife. Um, you can see somebody use the other offset knife, but you want to use the serrated, which means, you know, it's got these little teeth here instead of just the straight blade knife. Um, because this knife right here, if you use it as a way to measure, gives you almost the correct width of a burger. So you don't have to worry about doing too much adding or subtracting. So to start, I'll go ahead and kind of get this as close to the edge as possible. It's rounded on the edge, so it's not going to be perfect, but as close as what you can get it. And then I'll go through and just start making some cuts, okay? So each time I cut through, line it back up with that next edge. Again, being very careful to make sure you keep your fingers out of the way of it. But, and then I'll go through and cut this whole log. And then we'll go back afterwards to make sure that they are at the right measurement. Now, uh, beef is kind of expensive. So you wanna make sure we get as close to seven ounces as possible. And this is something that it should be pretty easy to get really accurate, like pretty much right at seven, give or take, I don't know, a tenth of an ounce or something else like that. Um, the weight of the burger is going to be a little different because it's ground beef. It has fat mixed into it. So depending on how much fat might actually be mixed into that little piece or that burger patty, it could weigh more or it could weigh less by just the thickness of it. But ultimately, um, what we're going to be using is that scale to make sure that we have everything right at the correct um, portion size. So anyway, um, it should only take you, if you're actually moving, uh, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, 20 at the most per pan of burgers. Uh, if it's taking you any longer than that, then you're wasting time. And again, I'd rather have you take your time and be accurate, but once you know what you're doing, you shouldn't be wasting time. All right, so I've got this whole thing portioned out. Now we'll go ahead and do this. So um, for those of you who don't know how to use a scale, it does have this Terry portion. So it's a button right here on the on off, it says tear. Um, you always want to make sure that's at zero. For example, if I put this pan on there, all of a sudden it's weighing that pan. But if I need to use this as a way to measure, you got to press that tear button. That'll zero it out to where it's not counting the weight of that pan. It'll only count the weight of whatever you're putting in the pan. Okay. If that's confusing, just ask somebody, we'll clarify for you. But it's really important to make sure that whenever you're measuring something, your scale reads zero before you put that thing on the best scale. So once again, by the same concept, uh, if I take that off, it's thinking that it's you know missing weight. So once again, I'll hit that tear button and it gets it back to zero, all right? So now, go ahead and take these burger patties out and uh, you want them to be at seven ounces. So as you can see, I'm at eight ounces, so I gotta take a little bit away. Um, you wanna try and keep the shape, nice kind of like hockey puck looking shape. So what I usually do is pull from like the mid, oh man. My scale is being a jerk. All right, so I'll pull from the middle. Um, sometimes you'll see people use a knife, kind of level it out. My scale is being a jerk. Pardon me, technical difficulties. All right, back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, we'll have another video on how to make sure the batteries are weighing out. All right, so we're at 693, 696. So I can get this right at seven, right? But then I go over a little bit, so then you're gonna be spending a lot of time going back and forth, trying to get the exact perfect weight. It's not worth the time. So if you get it at 7.2, or if you get it at 698, those are both acceptable. So within a 0.5, 0.05 of 
either plus or minus. So either a 6.95, 6.96, or even a 7.05, those are acceptable. Any more than that, if you're getting like 7.10, back it'll off a little bit. But the point is, is that we're spending a lot of time just trying to get it perfect and it'll, you'll waste time doing that. So just try and get it as close to seven without going over as you can, all right? All right, so I'm all done with all the rest of the burgers, but as you can see, I have this small pile of meat left over here. So you might be asking yourself, Ruben, what do I do with all that leftover meat? I'm glad you asked that, because I'm gonna show you. Um, it should be pretty self-explanatory. We turn it into another burger patty. So there's probably more here, I can tell, than seven ounces, um, but we'll wait out, figure it out. Okay, 7.72, so not that much more. Um, let's say you had, I don't know, seven, Ten and a half ounces. Well, now you have enough for a regular burger patty plus a kid burger patty. Um, but in this case, we don't have that. So we don't want to waste any. So we have a couple of options here. Um, one, you could just take this tiny little ball of meat that's left over and add a little bit to each patty. At least that way, we're not wasting it. We're kind of adding some value to the customer. Um, and I mean, it, it's at the end, we're, we're here to provide a service to our customers. So if we give them a little bit of extra in the efforts of trying not to waste, I'm okay with that. Um, the other option is to take it over to somebody who might be working grill and say, hey, I've got this little bit of leftover meat. Um, would you mind cooking it so that we can add it to the chili or something else? Okay. But in either case, you never want to waste it. We're not just going to throw it away. Um, and, and you don't just get to keep it for yourself either, uh, unless you want to somehow like turn it into your meal for that day. All right. So this was more of a, a ball of meat. So you kind of have to do a little bit more work to patty it out and make it look similar to the rest of them. Um, but you know, as you can see right there, it's, it's pretty close. So the next step is we have to press them. Um, this is a really, really important step because you want to have a nice even surface to all the burger patties. Make sure that they cook evenly as opposed to having a bunch of um, bumps and waves and make sure that um, the heat is distributed evenly. To do that, we put these on the patty paper. So one thing you have to be very cautious of because you have raw meat on your hands, you don't want to constantly be grabbing more because then you'll be transferring that meat to that box and the papers that you don't use it's unsanitary and not clean. So what I suggest to people is very similar to when we're doing chicken prep. So take your gloves off, you go ahead and take out a stack of papers. I don't know if this is gonna be more or less than what I need, but I know that um, I'm just gonna grab some. And if I have to throw a few of these pieces of paper away afterwards, it's not a big deal. Those things cost less than a fraction of a cent per sheet. So it's a very small price to pay to make sure that we're not cross-contaminating and that we're not making people sick. All right, so at this point, we'll go ahead and put the burger patties on these papers. So what I typically see is people will go ahead and lay these patty papers down in the, the Lexan that we're getting ready to store it in. And you can line eight of them per layer. Then go ahead and take this and put your burger patty kind of in the center of the sheet. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect. Um, but you know, do it with care, not just trying to be sloppy about stuff. Now I'm going to put another sheet on top of each burger patty and we're going to give it a light press to try and make sure that they are just evened out. You want to make sure that they're not too thin because then we won't be able to cook them to the temperature we want. Um, but just a, a press to make sure that they're even, like I said, for that cooking process. So now short six pan, light press for each burger patty. You'll see it kind of spread out and cover the surface of the paper. That's it. And then from here, it's just repeating that process all the way over again with the remaining burger patties. And that is it. All right, so from here, we'll go ahead and make a label. Bam! Uh, so name of the item, burgers, check the day, go to date, and my initial. The label is going to go just like all the rest of the items when we're labeling them on this narrow side, not the broad side. Okay, narrow side, not the broad side. So now I'm going to go ahead and transfer these to the walk-in to cool off. Make sure they're down to at least 40 degrees, uh, 41 or below. Uh, and then once that's done, before I leave for my shift, I'll go ahead and leave a note on the board like so. And then that's really it. So um, after that, uh, before I leave for my shift, I'll make sure to check the temperatures. If the temperature is low enough and it's ready for storage, I'll go ahead and put a lid on it, put it into the walk-in and rotate it to the bottom of the stack. 
If not, you leave this note up here. You make sure you tell somebody, hey, I checked the temp, but they're still too hot. Uh, at least that way they can be aware so that before somebody else leaves, before the end of the day, everything is stored properly. Uh, so that's burgers. Um, hope you guys dug it. If you got any questions, leave me a comment or uh, better yet, come talk to me directly. Anyway, we'll catch y'all later.